Hello and welcome back to O Level Computer Science Video 3 and this time we're talking about Python programming and in particular we're going to be looking at strings. So here we go, this is video 3 as I say, we've covered variables, we've covered if statements so far. This one is strings but we have got a long way to go. Okay so let's get started. Welcome to the third video as I've already said. If you are just starting out on your coding journey, understanding strings is a fundamental step towards becoming proficient in any programming language. And Python, of course, is no exception. But what exactly is a string? A string is a technical term for text, a sequence of characters. Whether it's words, sentences, or even symbols, strings allow us to work with textual data in our code. So to define a block of code as a string, you simply enclose it within either double quotes, as you see here, or single quotes. Okay, and I'm going to print off the two variables called my string one and my string two here. But the choice between the two is entirely up to you, as long as you maintain consistency throughout your code. There's also some things you've got to be careful of, um, the backslashes in particular, okay, for special strings and escaped strings. Let's have a little look at this in Python. Okay, so we're in Python, using double quotes to define a string, okay, so I'm going to use double quotes here, I've used single quotes here, and I've, I've printed both of these out, I've just ghosted out this for the time being. If I run this code, run module, of course it needs saving, okay, hello world, Python is awesome, okay, that's fine, that means we can use both, no problem at all, okay, you can see here, it doesn't matter whether I've got double string, double quotes, or single quotes. Okay, so that's good. But what happens if we want to put any of these quote marks actually into the sentence itself? If we've got, if we're pluralizing something, something that belongs to somebody, and we want to put um, a single apostrophe in the string, what can we do? Well, let's have a little look at this. If I take this out and put it here, so this code here at the bottom will run. Let's get rid of that. So let's have a little look. Be careful with these characters, yeah? The double quotes, the single quote, quotes, and the backslash. This is a backslash. Well, what am I talking about? Well, the backslash is an escape character. It's the escape string. So let's just move this out of the way a little bit. Okay, so be careful with these characters. What have I done here? Well, I've put the backslash in. It doesn't show this, of course. Okay, the red, it's not going to print out, so don't get confused with that. But... Okay, special string, be careful when using these characters. What I've done is I've put the slash in here, and I've put the slash in here, okay, to show that it, these characters are okay. By putting these slashes in, it sort of says, yeah, that's fine. This is okay. We can keep this in. So we've got double quotes at the beginning to start off this block of text. Be careful with these characters. But then I've had to put another backslash in, and then one at the end of it, to make sure these characters appear here, okay? And then the special characters, escaping string, this is a backslash, of course, I've had to put the other backslash in. I didn't need both of them, but this is a backslash, and put, if I put two in, it will allow one to appear, okay? So, a bit of a mess, but if we want to keep it all as one block of text, i.e. we're not using a plus sign, we're not using commas to separate two, in, it into two strings, that's how we would do it. You'll get used to that. It's a little bit confusing, but you will get used to that. Okay, so those examples illustrate how strings are declared and how special characters can be handled in Python. Okay, remember maintaining consistency in string declaration and handling special characters correctly are essential practices in programming with strings. Also, obviously working with variables from the previous lesson, lesson one, strings or number variables. Okay, so I've got a box here of my variable box. Um, so imagine you have a box where you can keep various things like numbers or words. If you put a number inside and say it's a word box, you can't really do any maths with it. You basically, you've turned the number into a character. So in this first one, my number equals input enter a number. The sum is my number, the number that's been entered, plus 10. Okay, a numeric value 10, and I want to print that sum. Now watch what happens here. So I'm going to go back into Python. Here we go. Here's the code. Again, I've blocked this code out underneath. I'm going to come to that in a moment. If I run this module, so I enter a number. Okay, let's enter 50. Okay, now it's going to give us an error message. Why? Because you can only concatenate strings, not um, integers. Okay, 
two strings. Basically, my number, because I've not used an int input, it sees whatever number I've entered, i.e. 50, as a, as a string. Now you can't attach a string to a number. I can't add those two together. Okay, it won't work. It would have to be an int input to enter a number value and then it would spit out the word 60. What do I mean? If I go here, int input, and bring that there, and then run this, Okay, enter a number, 50, and then it's going to give me 60. Okay, so it will do it that way. But you've got to remember what you are doing. Are you inputting a number or are you inputting a word, a string? Also, it works the opposite way. So let me ghost out this. And then the second one, I've left that in there. Look, let me put my name plus, okay and get rid of that. Okay, my name equals input, enter your name. My number equals int input, enter a number. So these are both correct, but the customer ID variable is a combination of the two. Now, ideally, I would like them both to be joined together. Okay, so print cust ID, it's gonna print out both of these. Now watch what happens now. I run the module again, click okay, enter my name, enter an ID number, okay. And again, we cannot concatenate these two numbers. It thinks we want to add them together. We don't, we just want them side by side. What we could do, if you wanted to print them out, what might be an idea, if I put a, um, a comma in here, like so, run module, okay, and we try again. Yeah, it will put them and say that this is a string and this is a number. That will show you what we've assigned to each of the variables. Okay, and please bear in mind if you're using 0001, it will change it to just one. So yes, be careful of mixing up strings and, numa and um, number variables, because it doesn't always work. So now, what about working with multiple strings? Okay, I've got a block of text I want to print out. I've got a little story about a prince here. Yeah, once upon a time there was a little prince, he lived on a tiny planet, okay? At the moment, with a string, it's one long line, and I'm going to show you that in a moment. Imagine you're writing a story or a long message in Python. Sometimes you want to make it easier to read by breaking it into multiple lines. You have two options to do this. The backslash n, okay, we'll start a new line. Or you can put triple quotes. We have been doing this to ghost out the text, but we can use this in a different way at the beginning and the end of your text. This way, Python knows that everything is in between those triple quotes is part of your string, including any line breaks you've added. So let's have a little look at this. If I go back into Python, so here we go, using line breaks backslash n. Here, I've got backslash n, backslash n, yeah, backslash n. So each time we put a backslash n in, and you can see, I'm not putting anything else in, I've got the quote marks, backslash n, just gonna move across if it lets me. Yeah, okay, but that's one, that at the moment that is one long line. Tiny planet, okay, and to the end. So it's not the easiest thing to do in terms of having to scroll across to read the thing. So what we can do, just gonna come back to the beginning here, we can use triple quotes in here, okay? And then I'm gonna print the first story, story with line breaks, and then I'm gonna print story with triple quotes. And we'll see what happens. So run this, run the module. Yeah, and as you can see, I've printed story with line breaks at the top, and then I've printed what's in there. So the backslash ends do work. And then here, I've got this little story here, which in my opinion is a lot easier to read. And I've got once upon a time, there was a little prince. He lived in a tiny planet, okay? So that's how you can do that. So working with line breaks. Yeah, a nice little tip there. Okay, so some other code snippets that I think are very, very useful. Um, we've got len word, which basically this function calculates and returns the length of the string stored in the variable word. Here we go. So five letters, okay, word. Length equals len word, okay, print len. So create a variable there. And basically the variable is the length of the word. And it outputs five, okay. Print word dot capitalize. I've got word equals a string, hello world. Okay, capitalize word equals word, yeah, word here, dot capitalized, print capitalize word, and it should print out the first letter of this string as a 
capital letter. Everything else remains lowercase, but it returns the modified string like that. Something else, and this is sort of going back to the um, the other bit we did in terms of mixing strings and and integers, but this time John and Doe, John is the first name, surname is Doe, we're going to name equals first name plus surname. Now when we print this out, it will output John Doe, it will merge them both together. Word.title, this method converts a string stored in the variable word to title case, where the first letter of each word is capitalized and the rest is in lowercase. So a little bit like what we've just seen in terms of print word.capitalize. Okay, on the previous, on this slide, we've now got word.title where it's going to print the first letter as a capital letter. It would be a lot easier just to write hello world with that. But if, if you've got a long, long word, if you've got a long sentence, then this is quite easy to sort of go through and make sure everything's correct. Word.upper converts um, a string, a lowercase word, into hello. This is great if you're asking people to input their names and some people are input an answer to a question and some people would put it in lowercase, some people might put it in uppercase, some people might put it in sentence case with the first letter being capitalized. This would make sure everything has been converted to uppercase. And in the same way, word.lower converts everything, every character in the word in the string to lowercase. And there's a couple of examples how to do that. Finally, we've got text.strip, okay? So text equals, this is some text, strip text equals text.strip, and then we've got in, in quotes, okay? Print strip text. Basically, it's gonna strip out the spaces, all the spaces that have been put in either side of the text, okay? I'll demonstrate that to you in a moment. And then print hello world, and we'll do this one again as well, seven to, te to 10. So this one, this prints a substring of the string hello world, starting with the index value seven up to index value nine, e e exclusive. Remember Python indexes start from zero. Okay, so zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, okay, eight and nine, okay not inclusive, exclusive 10, so 7, 8, 9, O, R, L, okay? So just show you those two in Python. So here we go, if we take this one, we're open, it's gonna say this is some text. Let's have a little look, run module. Okay, this is some text. Yeah, it's taken that out. So what do I mean? Well, basically, if I've got some block of text, which I don't know why I'd have this like so, it wouldn't give me the spaces, it would strip it out. Okay, and then let's just get rid of that. Print hello world, let's run that, run module. Okay, and it prints out ORL. So I can change this to anything. Yep, 710. What do we think it's gonna output this time? Looking at this. Adding the sp keep the spaces as well. What do you think it might enter? Have a think. Let's have a look. Run module. Click OK. And this time it's going to print out OMP. OMP being one, two, three. These three characters here. Why? Zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, the seven, eighth, and ninth character. Okay. Exclusive. Okay, I'm now gonna give you a set of challenges. A set of challenges to do with strings. There's three different challenges. I want you to have a little go at. So back into the presentation. Okay, so the three programs that I want you to try and have a go at coding are number one, we're gonna ask the user to enter their first name and then display the length of their name. You see how many characters there are. Ask the user to type in the first line of a nursery rhyme, such as Humpty Dumpty, and display the length of the string. Okay, ask the user to enter their first name. If the length of their first name is under five characters, ask them to enter their surname and join them together without a space. Display the name in uppercase. If the length of the first name is five or more characters, display their first name in lowercase. Okay, and I've put a little tip because task three seems quite, quite long-winded, quite complicated. Tip, use if and else. It's basically one or the other. 
It's a decision here, one or the other. So the challenge involves conditional statements, yeah, and string manipulation based on the length of the user's input. Okay, so we're going to be using len in there, but we're going to be using if and else for one or the other. We're going to be using len in this one and len in this one as well. Okay, so have a go, see how you get on. If you get stuck, my solutions are further on in the video, but I would recommend pressing pause, have a little go, and see how you get on. Okay, let's have a look at this. This is challenge one, two lines of code. So I'm going to prompt the user to enter their first name. First name equals input, enter the first name. Nice and easy, okay? Variable first name. Calculate and display the length of the first name. Okay, so I'm going to print length of your name, okay, this string, comma, len first name. Okay, so let's have a little look at this. Run module, okay? I'm just going to move this down so you can see them both together. Okay, so let's put in Robert. Okay, length of your name is six. Yeah, I'll just one more to just show you. Length is three. Okay. So that would be the first one completed. Okay, now for the second one, again, it's just two lines of code. It's exactly the same as before. So prompt the user to enter the first line of the nursery rhyme. Okay, nursery rhyme equals input. Enter the first line of the nursery rhyme. Calculate the length of the string, len nursery rhyme. So again, exactly the same. There's nothing, no, no surprises here. So let's run this one. It's grass to save it, yeah, okay. Umpty Dumpty sat on a wall. So there's 27, including spaces, 27 characters in that string. Okay. Okay, so challenge three. What I've done here, prompt the user to enter their first name. Okay, so again, first name, string variable, input, enter your first name. If the length, so where we're using if, conditional, um, uh, using a conditional statement, if len, first name, is less than five. Okay, so if the length is less than five, prompt the user to enter the surname. Okay, surname equals input your surname. Join first name and surname without space and display it in uppercase. So full name equals first name plus surname. Yeah, dot upper. Okay. Print full name in uppercase full name. So then we've got else, sort of the alternative, if not this, then this, else. If the length is more, is five or more characters, display first name in lowercase. Print first name in lowercase, first name dot lower. So that's where we're at. Let's have a run this and see what happens. Run module. So enter your first name. So if I go Robert, that's six characters. So it should, first name in lowercase, Robert. So that is the L statement, that's option two. Now, if I run this again, run module. Okay, this time I'm gonna put Sam. Okay, enter surname, Bulma. It's gonna do full name in uppercase, Sam Bulma. Okay, and that's how that works. So in here, I've used the len command again, like I've done in challenge one and challenge two, but I've also used dot upper and I've used dot lower, but yeah, from video two, if you remember, if and else were also put in there as well for a decision. Okay, that's it for video three. So thank you very much indeed for watching and I will see you in video four. I will see you next time. Thank you very much indeed. Bye for now. Please continue to ask questions, leave your comments, hit notifications and please subscribe. And finally, if you wish to buy me a coffee, I'd be truly grateful. Please visit buymeacoffee.com forward slash learning zone. Thank you very much indeed. See you next time. Bye for now.